beginnings, everyone. Welcome to another installment of, well, should I say beautiful blessed beginnings? Because it is in the evening time. Beautiful blessed beginnings, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another installment of Through the Fire. Today is March 18th, and I have some updates for you guys. I was like, let me go ahead and do it in the house instead of always doing it in the car. Shake things up a little bit. See, I got y'all. I got y'all. <laughs> I got y'all. No, y'all gonna have to excuse the way I look because... Um, well, I don't be coming on here looking any kind of way anyway because y'all already know what it is. This is my journey. But today I have been up. I'm tired, okay? I have been up since 6 this morning cleaning, okay? Um, well, I started cleaning about 6.15. I got up at 6, started cleaning about 6.15 because my son um, had a field trip today. Yes, it's a Saturday. But um, he's in the HBIC club at his school and today they had a, um, not they, but today there was a college expo, black college expo, and the HBIC um, club took a field trip there so that the kids could, you know, get their black college immersive, you know, vibes on. So I was up at six because my son told me that he had to be at the school at 7.30. But y'all guess what? I'm about to blast him out. Yep. Yep. I'm about to tell him. So y'all, guess what? So he told me he had to be at the school at 7.30. I kind of thought he told me he had to be at the school at 7.30 because they was leaving at 8. So he wanted to make sure that he was on time because I'm usually always late. But I be trying, especially if it's like something like that. I make sure that I get him there. Like, okay, we might be a minute late, but the bus ain't moved. So you know what I'm saying? I try to get him there like on time, on time, right? So boom, he was like, yeah, I got to be there at 7.30. So I was like, okay, cool. We left here at seven and i was trying to figure out why he was dragging himself so we left here at 7 24 and i was like yo come on because we got to be at the school we ended up getting to the school at like 7 30 ish i think it was like 7 30 and we was we was right around the time we were supposed to be right tell me why i'm sitting there for like an hour and i'm like yo like i really hope you didn't miss this bus this that and the third and he's looking at me, he was like, oh, well, maybe, I was like, hold on, are you sure that y'all was supposed to leave at 7.30? Y'all supposed to be here at 7.30? He was like, yeah, I think so. I was like, where's the itinerary? I had the itinerary on my dresser, didn't realize that I took it off of the back of the um, permission slip, because I usually make sure he has it so he knows what's going on throughout the day. So... <laughs> I ripped off the itinerary. The itinerary was in my room, so I should have looked before we left. Well, turns out, y'all, he didn't have to be at the school till 8.30, so we was in that parking lot for an hour. Yeah. So, anyway, I had to, I had to tell it. I had to tell it because, yeah, so he had me at the school for an hour, an hour earlier than what I needed to be. And then we sat there and waited for an hour. Now, had I known that, you know what I'm saying, they wasn't supposed to leave till 8.30, I would have took them, you know, to maybe Burger King or something, because that's where he loves breakfast from. And I would have gotten him something for breakfast. But he ain't know, I ain't know, I ain't want him to miss the bus. So, yeah. But that's how that went. So, yeah. But anyway, so my original plans was, uh, for today, was to go to the house, because I had completely forgot about his, um, field trip. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I really did because there's so much, like I said, so much I be trying to plan out like ahead so that I'm organized and everything. Y'all know me. I'm I'm very organized. I plan and execute. <laughs> That's me. So I was planning to go through the house today um, for the last time to make sure that, you know, we got everything out of the house because um, we needed to make sure that we got legit everything out of the house before any type of demolition or anything right so let's get into that child, ooh, child, let's get into that anyway I need something for this. so anyway with my son being on a field trip that I forgot about um I decided to go come back here to the rental and clean here instead until my scheduled appointment with um my scheduled appointment i had a meet a appointment to meet with my private adjuster and a new potential contractor yep i said new potential contractor so obviously 
that's one of the updates, y'all. <laughs> so I ended up firing um, the contractor that you all seen in the blueprint video. Y'all, I'm so old. We're going to get into all of that in the blueprint video, right? So I was hoping to have the blueprints um, in that video. And I was hoping to have it in time so that I could go back and edit that video before it releases or whatever. Um, but I don't have those blueprints. So, of course, you'll see this video after you see the blueprint video. That's why I'm like, blueprint video. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to have the, the blueprints in that video. So, anyway. Um, so let's get into why they were fired. So, they were fired because they were starting to move a little weird. And... It started raising red flags, and, and it just started getting really alarming. Um, I had noticed that, like, this week, and maybe last week, that um, the owner's brother was contacting me more than the owner was, which was, I was like, okay, you know, I, I met the brother, you know, they work together, whatever, right? Um, but the energy was just like really off. It was just like really weird and it was really off putting. Right. So like he was just basically like hounding and harassing me about, you know, money or whatever, which I understand that he's looking to get paid. But at the same time, he understood number one, there was an issue with the endorsement of the check in the first place. So they sent back the check. Wells Fargo sent back the check, sent the check back to me for proper endorsement. So I had, we had ended up having to write a letter because they were looking for a certain stamp, but my adjuster didn't have the stamp that they were looking for. We had to write a specific letter on letterhead. So this is all the stuff that is back office, that, like not back office, but like I say back office because you know, I own, own business and stuff, but this is stuff that like y'all don't get to see. Like this is the behind the scenes stuff that, you know, y'all don't get to like really get into. Um, so anyway, so the check had, had to, you know, go back to Wells Fargo, you know, after it was properly endorsed with the letter and everything. And so that's when they began to release funds. Okay, cool. So they started releasing funds with the way they release the funds is they give you a check for a third of the amount, right? So they sent me a check and it was addressed, of course, to me because I have to sign and endorse all the checks and deposit them and then that's when I disperse and I give it to I give it to my private adjuster so he can disperse it to contractors and just that and the third, right? So we, we have a system going, right? So we were at the point where I had to, um, they sent me back the check, I had to endorse the check and deposit it into uh, my account so that the check could clear so that I could make the money liquid and give it to the private adjuster so that he in turn can disperse the checks to whomever they needed to go to permits contractors this that and the third cool that way i'm i'm in the loop and i have to approve of everything that he sends out before he sends anything out so before he writes a check to send somebody i have to approve of it so i'm basically in control of the money in the entire time he's just dispersing it okay so let's just get that straight because I don't want to be anybody to be like oh well he's controlling your money no he's just dispersing the money I control it so got that out the way so he um so we were at the point where at the point at the time that the text messages and the call started coming in we were at the point where the check had just cleared from my um, in my account so what I did was I took a an official check from my credit union and and you know wrote a check out to my private adjuster. Well, of course, banks are gonna hold checks for a couple days, but if it's an official check, they don't hold it as long as if it, if it was a personal check, right? So since it was an official check, it was only gonna be held for like two to three business days or whatever. So we were like, you know, what's a couple of days? They can wait. You know, he was like, I got that all under control. Don't worry about it. So the brother kept hitting me up and I'm like yo like we're trying to you know the money is not available at this moment you know what I'm saying but he kept pushing like he kept harassing the fuck out of me for some money that was not available and it was getting to the point where I was just like I was getting irritated right 
So my adjuster hit me back, and I think this was like maybe like the next day after like that last text message that I sent to. I sent screenshots to my private adjuster because I'm like, yo, like I'm not with this. He was like, don't worry, I'm meeting him Thursday. We'll be fine. This is Tuesday when that's right. This was Tuesday when when the the conversation about the text message just happened with, between me and my private adjuster. It was like, don't worry about it. I'm meeting with him Thursday. You know, he'll be fine. He'll get you know the money that he needs and. I think that'll rectify the situation. It'll be cool. So I said, okay. So I get a phone call Thursday, not even, but it was like 1140, I want to say like 1143. I'm good with, with times and memory stuff. Cause it was before noon. I get a phone call and it's from my private adjuster. And I'm just thinking, you know, he's, you know, just updating me. Cause he keeps me updated with every detail. Like he keeps me in the loop with everything. Right. So I'm thinking he's just hitting me up just to update me and let me know, hey, you know, they received the check. The check is in hand. You know, they're good to go. So he calls me and I answer the phone. And of course, y'all know, I, I pick up on energy quick. So he had this like really concerning and worrisome energy to him. Right. And so I was like, OK, something's not right. So he was like, we need to talk. Um, do you have a moment? And so it felt urgent. It felt like really emergent to me. And so I was like, sure, you know, let's go ahead and, and, you know, talk. Okay. I was in the office at this point, right? Because I've been going in and out of the office. I telework, but I've been going in and, the, in and out of the office a majority, like at least three times a week during the week. So I was in the office at this time. Cause like, again, it's a Thursday. So I've been going in the office Tuesday through, Tuesday through Thursday. Anyway, so I was in the office. And he hits me and he's like, I think we need to go, um, I need, I think we need to go with another contractor. And I'm like, what's going on? So he hits me up and he's like, um, there's some funny stuff going on and I really, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with it. Well, they wanted him to do some things that was basically the way I put it in their, um, um, notice in which I was parting ways with them. They were doing some business practices that were unethical to us. And not only was it unethical, it was very alarming. And not only was it alarming, but it was outside of the scope of the contract. And I was not comfortable with that. And it just raised too many red flags for not only myself because of the way I was being harassed for the money, but it also raised concerns for my private adjuster because, again, I keep him in the loop with everything. Just like he keeps me in the loop, I keep him in the loop. So we were very, we're very communicative. So we know exactly what's going on. So with all of that, I was just like, no, mm -mm. we're going to have to part ways. Plus, this is what really pissed me off, right? So I was told, as I told y'all, that things were were happening i was told that permits were being granted well none of that was true they were not doing what they said they were doing and that was also a red flag i'm like yo like how you gonna tell me that y'all obtained the, demol the demolition permits because i told y'all that like i told like i was like yeah i gotta update y'all they got the demo permit like i was happy as hell like i was ready to bust on the wall bust it down you know what i'm saying but they lied so it's like why are you lying like what is this you know what i'm saying so it's just like nah can't do it can't do it so um and i haven't ever said their name on here and i'm never going to so i really don't mind speaking on the experience that i had with them so that was my experience um but yeah the demo permit that they told me that they had they didn't have it um also they told me that the guy had started on the blueprints and he was just waiting to get paid to release the blueprints to them never happened so he didn't even have the blueprints I don't have time to waste. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I was just like, you know what? Y'all are wasting my time and y'all are lying to me. And I'm, I'm, y'all already know when I'm on timelines, I'm on timelines. So I know I'd be like, yo, I'm trying to get stuff done. I'm trying to get things situated. I'm trying to do things by a certain time. So that really pissed me off because I don't need to be lied to in regards to what's going on with the rebuild of the house because number one my thing is okay so 
you're lying about this now. What about down later on down the line? You could be lying about other stuff. Specifically, when I could be back in the home. And that is risky because y'all know I'm renting this place. And I have to let them know 60 days in advance when I plan to break the lease. If I plan to break the lease before my lease is up. So if my house is ready like it's supposed to be ready when it's supposed to be ready, I have to break the lease. So I'm going to have to know an accurate timeline. What I cannot have is y'all telling me that it's going to be done at a certain time and then it's y'all ain't really on that timeline and I put in my 60 day notice and then I'm out of a place to stay for a month, month and a half, however long the timeline wasn't timelining you know what i'm saying so i was just like i'm not doing that that's too risky i think y'all know i think 10 steps ahead and especially with my child uh-uh so no so that was update number one they're gone so yeah update number two is that today as i told y'all i was meeting with my private adjuster and the new potential contractor well, he's not a new potential contractor anymore. He is my official contractor now. So let me tell y'all how that went. Let me tell y'all how that went, y'all. Okay. So what happened? So uh, uh, of course I told y'all everything that has happened with the old contractor. And so we were set to meet. Um, me, my private adjuster, and the new contractor set to meet at 11 o'clock in the morning at the um, site, the, the home site. So we met there at 11. Of course, I was a couple minutes late. They were on time. They were, they had already literally, I think I was about seven minutes late. See what I mean about being late? I ain't, you know, but anyway, so I was, I'm getting better because I'm usually like 30, 20, 30 minutes late. But anyway, you get me down to the single digits, we good for real. Like anyway, so, um, <laughs> I get there and they're already in the house, you know, they're talking about, you know, different things and I, uh, unbeknownst to me, they had already kind of went through um, what I was expecting, what I wanted, this, that, and the third. My adjuster is on point, okay? He made sure that he communicated all of that stuff, had all of that, you know, preliminary stuff out the way so that when I get there, it's strictly business, right? So I get there and my private adjuster opens the door for me, meets me at the door, opens the door, greets me and everything. And he's like, yeah, he's in here. Let's go ahead and, you know, get you guys meeting together. Da, 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 da. So we go in the house and I look up and I see this man and I'm like, okay, so God, I need you to let me know if this is really the contractor that's really supposed to be working on this. So... We're talking and there was a specific thing that I kind of wanted him to say. I needed him to say for, cause if that was between me and God. I was like, God, if you say this, you know what I'm saying? We good. Now, of course I did a little research beforehand. So no need to worry about that. It was just, I needed to make sure that I got what I needed from God. Right? So we were talking, we went around the house, I was telling him things, and he said what I needed him to say. And so after he said that, I felt my spirit, like my spirit team, y'all know my ancestors keep on me hard, y'all know, you know what I'm saying? So I, I felt my spirit team say, let's go, this is it. So I went ahead and I signed the contract. And I am really glad I did because as soon as I signed the contract, I mean, legitimately, I think maybe he was like queuing up the phone as I was um, writing my name on the contract. So when I tell y'all, I am super happy. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. There's a few reasons why, okay? The very first thing is that he's black. And y'all know how I am about black owned businesses, supporting black owned businesses, supporting black contractors and this, that, and the third. I always try to get out and shout out uh, businesses, you know, black owned businesses that I have actually like patronized and you know what I'm saying, had good experiences with. Y'all, I was so ecstatic because that's what I really wanted from the beginning. I wanted everything to be 
black. You know what I'm saying? I wanted it just to be black all across the board. Um, now, no, my private adjuster is not black. However, he was referred to me by not only close cousins, but family members and family friends that have been friends to my parents for over some odd years. So I was comfortable make, you know, making that decision to go with him because they were like, nobody's gonna look out for you like he did. Now, there was a black owned business that I was gonna go with that were private adjusters. However, I didn't like the way they approached the situation and handled the situation with me. It was very deceptive. And we can talk about that in another video because um, that actually happened the night of the fire. And like, it's not good to play on people's emotions as they're still in a state of shock. And like I said, it, it's a whole thing. And I probably do a video on it. Actually, let me write that down to do a video on. On um, the black owned private adjuster situation. And it's gonna be a small, uh, short video. Um, anyway, so, damn, this video is not, this video is longer than what I wanted it to be, but anyway, so, I was super ecstatic that he was black, like, that was really what my dream was, like, I wanted, like I said, I wanted everything to be black all across the board, I wanted to be able to, um, employ black contractors and be able to not only, pay you know black contractors so that they are working but um i wanted to be able to give reviews and i wanted to be able to recommend them to other people so that they can get more business you know what i'm saying so it's just um it's just a, a thing for me you know what i mean it's always been a black owned thing for me um i support black owned businesses heavily like if i know it's a black owned business I almost likely support but anyway so I'm very happy because like I said I get, I'm getting everything that I wanted black across the board and not only that though he proved to me that he was who I was supposed to work with because when I said when I tell you as he was on the phone as I was signing the contract he got on the phone he made sure that he had a dumpster being delivered but by the time we left that meeting and this was before okay we met at 11 this was all before 11 45 that by the time we walked out the house there was a dumpster scheduled to be one of those large industrial dumpsters there was a dumpster scheduled to be at my house on that monday so you know what i'm saying i definitely had that weekend to do what we had planned and get the things out of the house or go through the debris in the house um, so the dumpster was scheduled for that Monday. And not only that, he had the blueprints guy ready on the line so that he can explain to him what I wanted done. So y'all, my blueprints, he, the uh, guy told him my blueprints will probably be done next, if not next week, early part of the week after. So I'm like, yo, like it took, I'm not even gonna go there. But we are finally actually on the right track now, I feel. So that was update number two. Okay, so update number three is kind of just bouncing back to what I was speaking on um, in the beginning. I really didn't want this video to be that long. But anyway, update number three is we were going to go through the house and go through the debris and figure out if there was other stuff that was still salvageable that we wanted to get out of the house, right? Um, and there were a few um, items that we saw when we went in um, to, when my son went in for his um, little, you know, first time going in. We saw a few things, right? So he was just like, okay, so we're going to come back. And before, you know, they get the dumpster here on Monday, we're going to go in the house and um, and what I love about my private contractor, he was like, you know what, if you need an extra day to finish going through whatever, because I told him the plan. And he was like, you know, if you need an extra day or two to, you know, finish going through it before we come in and start cleaning the inside and throwing things out, let me know. So I was so ecstatic about that. So I'm looking around as I'm taking the private contractor, um, through the house to just, you know, explain, reiterate what I was looking for. Cause 
my uh, my adjuster explained it to him preliminary before I got there, and then I just reiterated, right? And so um, I was looking around as we were meeting, and I saw like spores of mold and stuff starting to grow and different things. And I made the decision. I actually went back to my son because the real reason that I was actually going to go through the stuff in the first place was because of him. Um, he had some things, of course, that he's seen, as you guys have seen in that video. He saw some things in his room that he was like, okay, I, mom, I want to come back and I want to go through my room to see if there's anything else that I can maybe save. Okay, that's what you need to, you know, get through this process. I'm going to make sure we do what you need, right? You have what you need. And so that was the plan going into it. And... I'm kind of glad he wasn't with me because I know as we were meeting, I'm glad he was on his field trip. I'm glad things worked out the way that it did because as he was on his field trip, if he was with me, he probably would have been going through that stuff as we were meeting. And I didn't realize how much mold and stuff was starting to grow in that house. Um, of course, you know, it's damp, it's dark, it's wet, blah, blah, blah. And so I should have it should have clicked to me, um, but it, I'm thankful it clicked before we did anything. So um, I was looking around as I was talking to, you know, the new contractor, giving him the information of, you know, what I wanted and what I was looking for. And I was looking around and I was like, you know what? And my spirit squad was like, do not bring this boy back in here to go through this shit. Like, be done with it. Like, really, like it's done let it go let it and and they were like i know that you <laughs> you say that it's for him but i know that there are some things that you might find or you might think you might find or you may be optimistic to find let it all go everything that was in that house just let it go and so i came back to my son after i picked him up from the um, field trip, literally, we just got back here. So I was just like, let me go ahead and do the video. He's upstairs now, um, most likely laying down and taking a nap. Because I know he's tired. He didn't sleep much the night before. Anyway, so <laughs> um, I just, I had to sit him down and I had to tell him like, babe, like I went through all of the, the house and there are starting to be mold spores and stuff that are coming up. I know there's mold. And I really don't think it's a good idea for us to, you know, really just like go through that stuff. You know, we don't have, I mean, we can get masks, but we don't have masks. And um, yeah, we have gloves and stuff, but I just don't want to risk that. And he was to the point where I think he's at the stage where he's like, you're right. I understand. Um, I was just in this place where I just wanted to see and I was just hopeful but when you say it like that and you really break it down like that like I completely agree and I understand so he's put he's completely cool with um so he's completely cool with hopefully that didn't cause my audio somebody was calling but um, he's completely cool with not going in there and not going through the rubbish and the debris. So that is where we are right now, y'all. That is the update. Like I said, today is March 18th. And that is the update for, yeah, for right now. So hopefully, um, I know, I don't even want to say hopefully, like I know I'm about to have like update after update after update because... My contractor is playing no games. So <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait for you guys to actually see things because I think after this video is when you guys are really going to start to be able to see like with your physical eyes instead of listening to me tell you shit. Um, you're going to be able to see it with your physical eyes. So that's what I'm super excited about. I am so sorry. I did not mean for this video to be that long, but y'all, I had updates and I had to explain to y'all exactly what was going on, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, like y'all know that these videos, this vlog is something for me as well. This is my journey. So for me to document like this is important to me. So thank you guys 
for bearing with me. Thank you guys for being here with my um, long ass update. But nonetheless, we got through it. And this update was important, like I said, because I feel like this is going to be the last update that I got that I give you guys without y'all actually being able to physically see something. So that right there kicks everything off for me. I'm really excited. So I will see you guys in the next installment of Through the Fire. Bye, y'all.